It's time for the movie raid. Right? Tonight's victim is director Steven Escobar that is currently done Xenophobia. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Fantastic, man. So tell us a little bit about this film. Now, this is an anthology type of film, isn't it? A little bit of a sci-fi and horror at the same time? That's correct. Xenophobia was actually conceived by uh, my partner, Joe Castro, 20 years ago when he was making a pictorial calendar. Uh, when I met him, he was uh, he had taken shots of aliens that he made and turned them into a calendar that he wanted to create. And at the time, I had a computer, so I took my Photoshop skills and didn't create this calendar that we were trying to sell to Barnes and Noble and places like that, but we decided uh, that, you know, we never got it released, so instead we decided we wanted to make a film about it. So 20 years later, we um, came together, he and I, and the third director, Thomas Churchill, and decided to turn this idea into a feature film. And that's what xenophobia has come from. Well, that's very cool. And by the way, Jason Brooks from Friday 13th Vision says hello. Oh, great. What's up, Jason? Hello, buddy. And so... How's it going, Jason? <laughs> Uh, yeah, awesome guy, man. Awesome team. With with this film, how do you carry like or and divide fear to the audience with several different segments in this type of film? I mean, it's not that easy to do. I know that. Right. Well, the, the idea was uh, we wanted to kind of have an homage to the 1980s films and a little bit of the 1950s science fiction films. So to do that, we had to create practical aliens. So Joe, with his special effects wizardry, we agree. He uh, made seven different aliens for the film that we decided to basically do like an old practical effect movie. So there were it was a minimal CGI, and CGI was just basically you know to just kind of introduce segments and stuff like that. But the majority of the film, the aliens were all practical, and that's kind of how we've taken that scary element, that scary alien abduction element, and put it into the film. And I think we did a really good job, or Joe did a really good job of. of doing that for the film. Honestly, man, from seeing that trailer, it, I think the aliens look really awesome because it reminds me a little bit like Hellraiser twisted version a little bit and and it looks real to me because if it was CGI completely, like I just could not really believe it. I couldn't take it in. I couldn't accept it because it looked fake. But this, I, I like the detail of the work and I think it definitely definitely does show this is Joe Castro's work for sure. Yeah, yeah. And, and this just kind of goes back to his roots. You know, that's kind of where he started. Give an opportunity to really create Something, something different, something that people hadn't seen. And uh, along with me and Thomas helping write the film with Joe, I think we created three unique stories that kind of tie together with a group of people that have been uh, abducted through their alien experiences, and that's what we get to see in the film. Now, do you think this has almost kind of re-revolutionized this particular method? Now, this type of method, anthology, is kind of a very low-key, very underrated, and um, it almost seems like a dying breed because you don't really see a tremendous amount of these now sure you see like dramatic versions of this but a lot of times either like the flavor doesn't really taste very well because it you know doesn't match up or you know just all kinds of things there but it's not there at the same time right and i think a, a lot of a lot of times when like motion pictures i think just in the 80s and 90s they took really just one story and kind of spread it out into a 90 minute or two hour movie uh, we didn't want to do that we wanted it to, to be like different stories that people could watch and kind of be taken back by, you know, the, the stories that you do hear, but you never really, you, you picture them in your head, but you also want to, like, see them on, on screen. And so we try to do that. After doing some of the research, we have found out that we are actually the first science fiction alien and abduction anthology film that's ever been done, because everybody else has done, like, science fiction films like The Twilight Zone, but there's never been an actual alien abduction anthology film. I think that we're, we hope to be the first to, to create that trend, and if other people decide to do that, then, you know, that, that, that's something that we'd like to be trendsetters. Would you say this also kind of reinvents uh, a different identity as an alien in this type of genre for this film as well? Because I, there's a lot of films out there, a lot of sci-fi films that involve aliens. So yeah, they're they're scary, they're creepy. They really have just one objective, straightforward. It's not exactly as, as scary, but it's a thriller. But it doesn't really put the oomph in terms of fear. Right. Uh, I, I think, you know, with our film, we kind of give a little bit of both. We give a little bit of a thriller, but we also have some scary elements for, you know, they're abducting them and they're, you know, the, the typical, you're in our spaceship, we're going to probe you. We don't really show that, but we kind of give enough so the audience can kind of take their own fear into it. I think what, what this film, what Xenophobia is giving you is the sound, the 
sound effects and the sound is giving you more of an insight as to what these people are hearing and what they're feeling at the time. We're hoping that that kind of translates to when the audience actually sees it, you know, so you kind of get a whole sensory experience watching and hearing and feeling. Do you think the audience will fully accept this particular type of story and be less subjective towards its actual plot in, in its entirety? There'll be some skeptics. You know, not everyone believes in aliens. But, but what I do know is there actually is a real, I guess, kind of like a group of alien abduction, like people that have been abducted. They, there really is one of some, somewhere up in North, Northern California. And it's, it's actually been on like those uh, alien abduction TV series on the Science Channel. In discovery, and there was, there is one that exists up there that uh, they get together and they talk about their experiences. So it's kind of loosely based on what like an uh, anonymous group, and they they come together and they speak about it, and that's kind of what we wanted to do. So there are some people that are going to say, oh, it's not, it doesn't make any sense. There's going to some people that say we love it because I believe in aliens, and you know everybody's going to take something from it. But if they're talking about it, then they must believe in aliens, don't you think? You think it's best less fantasy and more about internal fear of actual from from humans themselves? Xenophobia actually means the fear of aliens. So you know, xeno meaning alien. I guess in, in today's age, you know, xenophobia is kind of a word that's being used out there in, in politics and government that kind of thing. But we're we're taking that as the science fiction say you know area, which is aliens from other planets and stuff. So yeah, I guess if these people can take it easy however they want. Yeah, sometimes when you mix with that, I think it's best when you get into the audience's head because, like I said, xenophobia, the fear of aliens or the fear of clowns or the fear of spiders, arachnoph you know, like look at ra arachnophobia and stuff like that or, or anything like that in general, you're going to scare the crap out of someone when you put that in that title. But at the same time, you got to present that and, and try to present yourself uh, almost a, as an own presentation to here. It's like, here, this is, this is what you're going to be fearing for the next millennium. Right, and I think the, the movie sets it up uh, to kind of we don't we don't know if these aliens, if there are any, are going to come here to Earth and the South. I mean, the movies that, that, that do that and that, that have actually presented that idea, you know, we try to present it in, in the sense of these alien abductees, and uh, you know, but whether you're scared of them or not, I think I think it's we should be presented in an entertaining way. You think it's best less reality and more science fiction for the story in, in terms of to telling the story itself? Yeah, I think, you know, there's this kind of reality. I mean, you can, you, the reality is is that these people believe that, they're, that they were abducted. I think the suspended reality is do these aliens actually exist? And uh, it's up to the audience to, to kind of go with it and take let yourself go and let yourself go for this ride that we presented. You think sometimes it's going simple makes a, a whole different ball game, a, a whole different structure of a story by just going a simple route, but actually structuring around it to make it a whole different entity. I think you know, yeah, I, I, I think that you can you can simplify a story and uh, you just have uh, situations and stuff that kind of take you through that route. You know, you simplify it by saying, you simplify this whole movie is these aliens that exist on Earth somewhere. I mean, people believe that there are like, aliens on Earth already. So uh, we simplified that by saying, you know, where where are these aliens coming from, or where um, how many different species are there? That's that's kind of how we present it. And what I like about it is like mystery is always good, but also when you see horror slash sci-fi type films, especially that involves aliens, oftentimes they're a pretty well exaggerated, and sometimes it's to the point where you gotta have some kind of belief in it to in order to sell it. Because to me, I want to be thrilled. I want to know, you know, where do these guys come from, or you know, keep me guessing every time, keep the audience guessing every time with this type of uh, type of film. Well, we don't know. We don't know where these people come from yet. We're, we're just kind of getting to know that they actually. Yes, and uh, these people are coming together to talk about their experience and kind of coming up with their own ideas and uh, creating uh, fear within themselves because they don't really know if one of them may or may not be part of that part of you know that race. So it's it's kind of like not knowing whether the person next to you is a cop or are they undercover or that kind of thing. So well, it sounds pretty interesting the way how how it's played out. It sounds like okay, here's a group of people that no one knows who's what what profession where they come from what state they come from what na you know what what kind of background they actually come from or if they're actual people at all I mean that that's what it sounds like to me from based on just these trailers like the aliens it almost seems like uh, almost a foreground because you're gonna kind of you're focusing on the group it's like okay what's happening with these guys and then the aliens aliens on top of it just makes it a heightened sense of okay what's going to happen now right 
and I think that's and it's like uh, that's without giving them uh, anything away. I mean, that's kind of your journey. You're watching this journey of these people, and it's up to the audience to kind of guess who's what, and kind of letting yourself go and letting yourself be, letting yourself be entertained. Now, having to get this out there in terms of other markets, uh, how do you feel that this might actually be on a Sci-Fi Channel or other networks? Do you think this is more profitable for yourself? Well, our distributor Vision Films right now has it was just released on August sixth, this Tuesday. And it's in the U.S. and Canada. In the next couple of months, we're planning to release it internationally. After that, there will probably be a, a point where we're going to, ch- it'll probably be on either Sci-Fi, Showtime, or HBO. So that's that's kind of like our intended target, in the, probably in the next couple of months, in the long run after we've had a, our international, I guess, uh, releases. Well, that sounds pretty cool. And not only that, you've not just directed one segment, but you have several other directors have done other segments. Can you uh, name those guys as well? Yeah, uh, well, of course, Joe Castro, like I mentioned, he directed uh, on one of the stories. There's three stories in the in the film, and each one of us directed one. Joe directs the first story. I directed the opening scene and co-directed with Joe on the second story. And then I also directed the wraparounds, which are the story of the group. And Thomas J. Churchill directed the third story. We basically came together and wrote our script, script separately. Several meetings, and we were basically reading the scripts to each other and deciding what, giving input on each, every story. And once we started filming, filming this movie in 11 days over last summer, the summer of 2018, we filmed all this. Then once we were done with the three stories, that's when we started putting together the opening scene, and we shot that up in the Toronto Pinnacles, up in the Mojave Desert. The Toronto Pinnacles is actually a location that uh, Planet of the Apes has filmed back in the 60s, and it's also shot many, many other films there. So we went up there to film this opening scene, because like everybody, when they picture alien abduction, they always think of the desert. So we wanted to start off with something that was very familiar with the audience, and we did that. And then once we filmed that, we wrote the story, the story story that was going to combine all three stories together and that was the wrap around and then we filmed that that's pretty cool, man, because I'm glad that you mentioned about a familiar territory, because if you were to do this somewhere completely different, somewhere outwardly, as at the same time, it's like, well, you're kind of not selling it because, you know, it is an alien film, but then you're going to you're going to end up falling in a category, let's say, like Aliens or Alien vs. Predator or half a dozen other films that's been out there and you're going to be categorized under that area. And I, and I can see that you're trying to separate yourselves from everybody else. Yeah, I and mean, basically the film, we've taken elements that we've seen from other films that we like, and we've kind of integrated them into this film with, with our unique twist and, and plot points. Anyone who's, who's ever been a fan of Close Encounters, or I can't think of some of the films in, in the 90s that are, any, any science fiction film that, that talks about aliens or alien abduction or alien uh, aliens coming from other other planets to Earth. That's kind of what we created here. And so it's, it's a, you know, a, like I said, it's a montage or of ideas from that, but we've created our own little twist. Can, can we expect this on DVD and other places physically, like yeah, the, the big retail places as well? Yeah, uh, right now you can get it on Amazon, on DVD and video demand. You can also go to Walmart. I know Walmart's going to be having them on their shelves. It's not part Already. I believe that Best Buy is also a place you can go and get the DVD. And then you can order it online as well. I think eBay will be carrying it and a couple of other platforms that are like discount DVDs. I think you can just kind of do, do a Google search and you'll, you'll find where you can actually order the film. And you can actually get a physical DVD. Or if you prefer, you can get it on iTunes, any cable file, video on demand, any place that you, you watch all your other movies, you can you can certainly get it a uh, digital download. Well, that's very cool, man. Can you give us any other promotional links that you would like to shell out there for us to check out right now, including Joe Castro's work? Yeah, we made a film last uh, in 2016 that is still available on iTunes called Terror Tunes 3. It's a, basically, we made we started the franchise back in 2001, and basically it's, a, it's about killer cartoons that come to life and kill people in cartoon ways. We're now uh, working on part four, which we hope to have it done by the end of the year, and uh, hopefully by next year we'll be another part on iTunes as well, on Amazon. But uh, if you check it out, you can check out Terror Tunes 3 on iTunes, and you can also check it out on Amazon. We also made a movie back in uh, 2012 called The Summer of Massacre, and that movie is a, a uh, another anthology, which is a horror anthology, and that movie actually holds the Guinness World Record for the highest body count in a slasher film, and we have 155 kills on screen, so if you want to check out pretty much a death a minute, 
you can you can check it out. It's on, it's on Amazon. Check it out on there. A couple of other movies that we're planning to re-release on uh, on Amazon as well. And uh, we'll let everyone know when it's when we're ready. Very cool, man. So that is director Steven Escobar. Thank you. Well, I appreciate you having me, Mike. And I, you know, I wish that everybody can uh, check out Xenophobia.